What's going on, y'all? Man, it's LA Rich and Lee back with another VM, man. And look, today we got the one and only Charlie Kirk back on the channel with him doing a video titled Charlie Kirk Humiliates Race Baiting Sociology Student. Now, I'm interested to see how exactly he is going to race bait in this, bro, because there's numerous ways you can race bait, man. And I want to know if it's, it's going to be some complete outlandish things that he says to race bait or. You know, it's just going to be the regular general. Y'all get what I'm saying. But before we get into this video, what I want to say is thank y'all so much for helping me hit 11.8,000. Look, um, I almost just put up the wrong number on my 8,000 subscribers. We're going to roll to 11.9 now. I appreciate y'all so much for all the love and support y'all show me every single day. It truly means the most to me. And nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and get into this video. Y'all make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know some more videos to react to, man, whether it's from Charlie Kirk or anybody else, and I got y'all with it. And by the way, these are my favorite videos to react to currently. These Charlie Kirk debate videos and everything, they're my favorite to react to right now. So if you have some more that you would like to see from me, put it in the comments, man, and I'll make sure to do it. But hey, enough of the talking. Let's do it. On the black community in the United States? Some, and that's a good question. So if you, imp if you correlate all the impact of Jim Crow and slavery, I would say that you could generously say 26% single motherhood in the black community in the 1960s. So about 26% of all black babies born in the 1950s and 1960s were born to a single mother. Now it's 77%. So I would ask you, why did it jump 50 so points, high, 50% man. since the Civil Rights Act as America got significantly less racist? So that's fine. I don't know why it jumped that, who cares? But well, it wasn't slavery or Jim Crow, it no. was something else. So the only lasting impact that slavery had on the US was that less um, black families had fathers. No, not necessarily, but have you ever known anyone that's owned a slave? No, but I know a few presidents who did. You know them personally? <laughs> so, so you know anyone that was ever a slave? Well, no, because... <laughs> I didn't hear what they said. So, so, okay, I don't know anyone who was a slave, so it had no impact? No, it had some impact. The question is, did it have an impact that is measurable and significant enough now in 2021, where we saw a key metric that influenced the livelihood of the black community, like single motherhood rate, that as America got less racist, all of a sudden now 77% of black babies are born without a father, where before it was 26%. And I suppose the question is this, because this is the question about systemic racism, right? What law that is in practice today actively discriminates against black people? So, so here's what I would say to that. The idea of capitalism and America, like you said, is, is it doesn't matter who you are, show me what you got, is fresh start. So what would happen if you had like 150 years in a country for your family to build wealth, to own a house, to have a job, to get college education for your kids, to build generational wealth? And then you took another family who didn't have the opportunity to do any of that for 150 years and then set them off on the same even starting point, is that really an even starting point and would that not result in some kind of systemic disadvantage for so those people? So the black middle class was the fastest growing demographic in the 1940s and 1950s until the Great Society Act and that intervention. It's very tempting to do what you're doing. And I'm not faulting you for it, because you've probably been propagandized to believe it. And that's OK, because I think you're actually a victim in this case, because you've been misled to want to believe that things you never lived under, never understood, and that I think you are partially seeing had a disproportionate impact in the world that you're living in today. So for example, if that were to be true, then first generation immigrants would not be able to quickly be able to make good choices and move up the ladder in this country, which I think we have some first generation immigrants here tonight. Now, let me say this, that this idea that America is systemically racist to the core would also be quickly debunked by the fact that more blacks 
have legally immigrated to America since the 1980s than ever were here brought as slaves. Over two million blacks from the Caribbean and from Nigeria and from Western Africa have come here to America. So the question is, why is it that in every statistic that you could probably... Okay, you see, the point that the guy was making, it wasn't a bad point, but it would have to be, you would have to look up more factual evidence regarding that, you feel me? So you can't really just go off of, well, this and that, you know, black people started off 150 years ago, you know, and white people were held, were just at higher, what can you say? Rankings or points in their life 150 years ago. So put them together and who who's had the he, he, better head start to life in general, you know, with generations, with generations on and on. That can that makes sense, but if you look more into factual evidence, I'm sure it could factual evidence. I'm sure it could completely dismiss that whole entire argument. You feel me? Which is what I think Charlie just said. Africa have come here to America. So the question is, why is it that in every statistic that you could probably rattle off, are black people doing worse than white people? What is it? Well, I would point to the fact that fathers are not in the home because it was 26 percent of black females in the 1960s were single mothers, now it's 77%. That is ridiculous that his grew that much, man. From 26 to 77, bro. Wow. As times have gotten better, it has gotten worse as far as fathers in black. Man, that's crazy, man. That shit, I, I could never look at that and it just not be wild to me, bro. It has to do that much, bro. Ridiculous. Black females in the 1960s were single mothers, now it's 77%. If you look at the Brookings Institution, a liberal think tank, there are three things you need to do to stay out of poverty in America. Number one, graduate high school. Well, because of public sector unions and the dominance of our government schools, that's harder than ever in far too many communities. Not just racial, not just black communities, not just Hispanic communities. The second thing, get a job, any job. And the third thing is to obviously not to commit crimes, but to try to try to get married before you have children. And so some of what I believe has contributed to the downfall of some of these communities has nothing to do with white people with the neck on black people. Instead, it's the following fathers no longer being in the home, the rise of sexual anarchy that came in post 1960s li liberalism that removed this idea of sex being confined to a marital relationship to be gratuitous and everywhere all of a sudden you've seen an increase in the birth in not just the birth rate but the single motherhood rate and abortion alongside of it that is true because put this for an example we can classic it is being classified a 14 year old can be classified as a father you feel me and i know you i see that i see this a lot bro it is so many kids out here getting pregnant, man. So many goddamn kids getting pregnant, bro. And to be cla a, a 14 year old being classified as a father, and that father not being in that kid's life, you do you that that will lead to that number higher, being getting raised more and more and more to what we at 77 percent now. So it honestly makes sense if that number being that high makes sense bro and I, i'm glad charlie kirk preaching it too about um in needing to wait till marriage to have kids and everything and or just how because that that i feel like that whole point is centered around having sex at an early age too you know because having sex at an early age a lot of it ain't protected a lot of it is not protected bro and these childs come from a lot of them are unexpected. You feel me? You've seen an increase in the birth, in not just the birth rate, but the single motherhood rate and abortion alongside of it. I would just ask this question. Just, I'm just curious. How much do you think outputs are, are based on people's decisions, based on the advantages they're born into? I mean, as someone who's taken introduction to sociology, your life is greatly influenced by what the you know, you're the conditions you're born into. But I promise this will be the last thing. Just you say 
there's less fathers in the home of you know many black families, and yes. that's the issue. So, what do you think is keeping fathers out of the home in those? It's a great do question. Think, do you think it could be over policing and police arresting, like disproportionately? Went through this, everybody. Do you think it could be? law enforcement disproportionately enforcing laws in black neighborhoods and arresting more black males than any other demographic? So blacks are actually under arrested and under policed per the percentage of crimes they commit. We talked about some of those numbers. But let me tell you one thing in particular. In the Great Society Act, we decided as a civilization to subsidize single motherhood. In the 1960s, we told black women you no longer need to be married to have children, you can get married to the government and we saw a dramatic escalation and increase of the deterioration of the nuclear family and a replacement of that of the nanny state and the welfare state. And I would say this, that every single activist group that steps up that talks about systemic racism and oppression, if you look at the data, purely the data, if there is a movement to put black fathers back in the home and to try and challenge the sexual anarchy that came in the post 1960s and had a more prudent and pious view of sexual relations in America, which is a very unpopular view, by the way, for most Americans. But it's true that before the 1960s, sexual relations were at least culturally supposed to always be confined to marital relationships. Mm -hmm. The more gratuitous that we have been in trying to catalog it in media and in pop culture and in Hollywood and, yes, in schools, then all of a sudden you have seen people say, well, why do I need to get married for that? Marriage is the bedrock institution, and strong families create strong communities, which create strong civilizations. And this is why immigrant communities that have come to America, and first-generation immigrants, they're able to move so quickly up the socioeconomic ladder, because they might not have wealth, they might not have big bank accounts, they might not own a lot of land, but they have the thing they know that will keep them together, which is a family that will not be broken up at any means necessary. I'll finally say this. Let That's me just say true, this. That's true, man. That is true. That's no, a good point. I, I, want to I want to thank you for coming because it took courage to ask that question. I'm just going to ask you to do one thing. Please forget everything you learn in Introduction to Sociology 101 because it was likely all garbage. So thank you so much. I mean, that's just the main thing, bro. I, I, it's, it's not as valued as it should be with people caring about family nowadays, man, and how important it is to maintain and have a, a great family around you. You know? But... That, those are things that have just went downhill as time has gone on, man. And I don't, I mean, at this point, bro, I feel like it's just a lost cause. It's a lost cause with uh, people being more centered around having a family, caring about what they're doing instead of how they're feeling in the moment. But... It's nothing you, in my opinion, it's nothing you can do at this point with how far gone this whole society um, has gone with just that right there. But I could be wrong, man, and I hope I am wrong. But thank y'all so much for helping me hit 11.8 thousand subscribers. We're going to roll to 11.9 now. I appreciate y'all so much for the love and support y'all show me every single day. It truly means the most to me. Nonetheless, that's when I click out the video. Y'all make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And it's LA Rich, I'm getting up out of here. All right, ciao.